Well, hello, kids. Been missing you for a couple of weeks for my midweek service. Hey, have your folks send me a little message telling me how you enjoyed the WOW VBS last week. Hopefully, you were able to be a part of that. Hey, I want to ask you a question. What color is this? It's pretty obvious, right? Blue. Yeah, obvious is a word that means something that's easily understood or easily recognized. Like, how many fingers do I have up? Two, that's right, one, two. You are obviously very intelligent. And so today we're going to talk about something that should be very obvious to us in our disco kids between and betwixt the center of the middle of the week, the final online church time. <laughs> Let's sing and dance some, all right? Let's praise the Lord. Feel the wonder, say his name. Watch the darkness slip away. Put your power on display. Say goodbye to fear and shame. Since you're watching this, I want you to have your mom or your dad, you know, text me or Facebook message me or something. Let me know that you're watching the July 8th edition of our midweek service. And next week we'll have a little drawing and maybe you'll win a special prize. Is, Is it that, that obvious? obvious? Now throughout your life, boys and girls, you're going to be tested on things to see how much you know about certain you know, subjects and matters and things like that. And in a moment, we're going to start a little test here. I got five images I'm going to put on the screen, and I want you to give me your best shot, your best answer at what you think it is. We're going to see how obviously intelligent you are. The first one comes from a contest that you'll see from time to time. I've seen it all my life. Somebody will take a glass jar and they will put Skittles in it or jelly beans or M&Ms or pennies and say, how many's in here? And then you guess. You write it down on a piece of paper and the one that gets the closest is the one that wins. Well, what I'm using is marbles. So I want you to look at this glass jar. I want you to tell me how many marbles that you think are in the jar. Was it that obvious? 
whoa, you guys are, you, you guys are great, you know, uh, let's try another one. Now, I, you know, I've started drawing a little bit on this uh, image that I want you to complete. You're going to have to look at what I've done, and you will have to imagine what it is by completing it by just looking at it, okay? It's not all filled in and everything, so you're going to have to look hard and figure out what this is that you are seeing. That's right, it was an ostrich! <laughs> no, not really. The rest of you, you guys are so obviously smart. Of course, it was a rabbit. Pethky rabbit. Next is a game of tic-tac-toe. What I want you to do is consider yourself the X-Man or X-Woman, whichever the case may be. And I want you to take an X and I want you to find the location that will help win this game for you. All right, here it is. Ah, oh, yeah, way to go. That was very, very good. Speaking of the letter X, okay, got a little word search here. You know, a couple hundred letters on a on the screen, and I want you to search diligently and see if you can find the name of an animal. Here it is. Whoa, you're so quick and so obviously smart bunch of youngins. Way to go. Hey, and lastly, there are gonna be four pictures that are gonna come up on the screen one at a time. And I want you to find the one that's different, okay? So study them hard, study them as much as you can to tell me which one is different. All right, here they come. One, two, three, and four. Do you see it? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty awesome, wasn't it? You guys are great. Uh, and it was obvious, wasn't it? You know, I mean, here comes three ugly butterflies and then all of a sudden a beautiful picture of Herkimer, right? Well, no, that's not obvious, is it? It's like it's the other way around would be more obvious. Above all obvious things, boys and girls, you need to know this, and you already do. God loves me. Say it with me. God loves me. I want you to say it one more time. It's so obvious. God loves me. In the Bible, Jesus tells us about God's great love and care for us. He told a story about a shepherd who had 100 sheep. Oh, he loved his sheep and he kept them so safe. Every day the farmer took his sheep to find new grass to eat. And one day, one little lamb went off all by himself. That night, the shepherd counted all of his sheep. There were only 99. One lamb was lost. Oh, the shepherd. He left the 99 sheep and he went to find the little lamb. He loved his little lamb, just like Jesus loves us. The shepherd, he walked a long way, uphill and downhill, looking everywhere for the little lamb that was lost. The lamb was lonely. The lamb was frightened. Ba, ba, he cried. He was sorry he hadn't stayed close to the shepherd where he would be safe. The shepherd heard the little lamb. I'm so glad I found you, he said. You are my precious lamb. Jesus feels like that about you too. Now I would say there's nothing in this world that's more obvious to me than that God loves me. Jesus loves me, they're the same people. God and Jesus are the same. And they love me. And I remember as a young boy, I don't know, about 10 or 11 years old, a pre-teenager, that uh, I loved to run. I loved to exercise. And I was part of a summer training, kind of a track and field thing that uh, at the high school. And I lived pretty close to high school, just a few hundred yards away from the stadium. So I was there a lot. And so we were running up and down the bleachers, you know, training ourselves. And I slipped between some bleachers and I fell about 30 foot, hit the ground hard, broke my arm. Coach came running, all the boys, they came gathering around me. You know, are you okay? Are you okay, Kim? Everything okay? And I toughened up. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm fine. My arm was hurting big time, but I wasn't gonna let them know I was tough. And, oh yeah, I'll be fine, I'm fine. But, but I'm gonna head on home now, okay? Cause I wanna check this out. Okay, okay. So I took off, crossed the parking lot, went to the house. And when I walked inside, my mother was in the kitchen. And as soon as I saw her, I broke down and cried. 
and she wrapped her arms around me. She consoled me and, you know, took me to the hospital and I got all fixed up. See, there was a time right there where I had to go to someone I obviously knew could take care of me and help me. Those boys couldn't. That coach really couldn't, but my mom could. And so I went to her and I broke down and I said, Mom, I need you. And it's the same way with God for us. When I'm hurting the, the most in my heart, when I feel like nobody else cares, whenever I'm scared or confused, you know, there's one that I can go to. The Bible says that he never turns his back on us. He never leaves us, never. And we can always go to him through good times and bad times. Turn your heart toward God. He's the only one that can fix all the hurts and pains, but you trust him, you believe in him. He's obviously the one that really cares the most for you. Let's worship the Lord. really obvious that he is indeed a very good father. Mm -hmm. Now it's true that God puts people in our lives, you know, to give us help. You know, just like the story about me and my mom. My mom was there for me and I knew it and I could go to her. But sometimes life isn't happy. It's not fair. Sometimes things are difficult and you need God. You need to go to him and talk to him about things, okay? Now, 
what's important to hear this? Because this is what we all do, you know, from time to time. And that is, is when things are going great, we say, okay, God, everything's going great. So I'm going to put you on the shelf and I'll take you down and talk to you whenever things are going tough. And then when things go tough, hey, God, I need you. Where have you been? Well, you put them on the shelf. God wants to talk to you every day. He wants you to be his friend and you, him to be your friend. And, you know, you wouldn't treat your friend like that. You would want to talk to your friend every day and somebody that you care about. The Bible says to, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, meaning whenever you're awake, give thanks to him, give praise to him, listen to the word of God, trust him, believe in him, and lean on God for everything that you need and for everything that you are and everything you want to be. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for these boys and girls. Thank you so much more than that for your love for us. It's obvious that you love us. It's obvious that you care for us. It's obvious, Father, that you have given everything, including your own son who died on the cross for our sins. We thank you for that. I pray today, Father, that each and every one of us, myself included, take time to be with you. And don't put you on the shelf, but to teach us to keep you close to our heart each and every day. I thank you, Lord, for these lives that hear this word, and I pray this word will change us completely from the inside out to be more like you. We thank you for your obvious love. We thank you, Lord, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, kids. So obviously, we care for you. I love you, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Love on your folks. Love on God today. Bye-bye. Take care. Today.